One you see here on the back, just part of the muscle, this is called the cutaneous maximus, a word that means the big skin muscle overall. On this mink, not so big, most of it's been cut away here. It has its origins on the mink's lower back, it would go all the way up and wrap underneath the mink's underarm, and in fact, I think on the mink down there, you can actually see the full length of this muscle overall, okay? So we call this cutaneous maximus. This white stuff that I'm spreading open, this is fascia, deep fascia, which is connective tissue that separates one muscle from another muscle overall. The mean contracts this muscle, it'll kind of make the fur on its back stand up, and in fact, have you ever seen certain, like a short-haired dog, when they get very angry, there's a little strip that runs right down their back where the fur stands right up, that's very similar to what this muscle does on the mink, and the very same effect it has. In humans, we have no such muscle by that name. Big skin muscle or cutaneous maximus. Now, of course, when I see this muscle, what do I think it looks like? Big strips of bacon. I call this the bacon muscle when I see this thing overall. So we call this muscle, we said, cutaneous maximus. Just reflect it down to the mink's lower back and stop right there. Next, up in the mink's head, you see a little very thin muscle cut along here. This is called the platysma muscle. In fact, in humans, we do have this muscle. In humans found mostly in the front of our neck. It's a paper-thin muscle, almost just a little bit thicker than the one you see on the mink here. And when you contract this muscle, what kind of tenses the skin on your neck, kind of makes your neck stand out like, kind of like that, that goofy expression. And the mink, it makes the fur on its neck stand up a little bit more. That's its overall function. That's a little more substantial muscle. So we said in humans and in minks, a paper-thin muscle, and that's platysma. The first part of that word, platys, means flat, a very thin, flat muscle. We said thin as a sheet of paper. So this is the platysma muscle. Look how thin it is. You almost can see right through it. Okay? It's like very thinly sliced lunch meat. Once again, more meat reference. I love doing that in this lab. So that's platysma. Then deep, we're going to see the mean cast three separate trapezius muscles. In humans, we just have one on each side. The minks have three. Why the difference? Well, they're quadrupeds. They use their forelimbs differently than we would use our arms. Uh, all these muscles are named from where they insert. So we have a clavotrapezius that would attach to where the mink's clavicle would be if it had a clavicle. They don't have clavicles. In the middle here, there's an acromiotrapezius. What part of the scapula would that attach to? The acromion process. Down here is the spinotrapezius. What part of the scapula would that attach to? The spine. Oh, not the spinous process, the spine of the scapula. So these muscles we said will attach to the clavicle and or the scapula. What do they do in humans and minks? They pull your shoulder up, they elevate the scapula, also acts to retract the scapula and pull it back. So same overall function we see in humans that you're going to see with the mink here. Although the muscle looks a little different because it's more elongated. This animal has a very elongated torso. So right here we're going to start dissecting out. We can already see part of the first one here. This is clavotrapezius. So we have more of this muscle exposed now, so you can see part of clavo. The next muscle right in here is kind of like a broad triangular muscle, and this is a, our acromiotrapezius, or the mink's acromiotrapezius muscle. So now we kind of see two muscles. See, here is clavotrapezius, here's acromiotrapezius. I want to try to find a separation point. You can almost can see right along here, it's like a little border there. We almost want to change color. Put the scissors in here and try to separate right along that border. And on the back side, right in here now, we can see again where the muscle ends the border between this and spinal trapezius. Now we see part of chromiotrapezius. Lastly, in here we're going to see the third, kind of a thin, another triangular shaped muscle, and that's spinal trapezius. So now rather than just one big piece of meat here, you can see three different muscles. Clavotrapezius, chromiotrapezius, and spinal trapezius. Okay? So one, two, three, one last muscle to work on today. Muscle in the mink's lower back that I just mentioned, this whole big muscle right in here, and that is platysimus dorsi. The lateral border is marked by this layer of fat you see going right along the side of the animal. Put <clears throat> the scissors in here and just lift this off the underlying abdominal muscles and or intercostal muscle. And if you look here, big muscle found on the mink's back. You can track this muscle, you kind of pull on it here and see almost kind of the mink's arm kind of pull back like that, and you kind of yank on it. That's what it does in our body as well. It pulls the arm backward. We say it extends the arm. So it kind of pulls it back like in that fashion. So that's a dismiss dorsi, a fairly big muscle to work on right down here in this region. The minks in the minks lower back area, that kind of goes up the middle of the back. We call this cutaneous maximus. Then you had another paper thin muscle. This was called platysma. You reflected it back from lateral to medial right down the center of the back of the minks neck. And we said we had three trapezius muscles, clavotrapezius, acromiotrapezius, spinotrapezius. 
Finally, the big muscle in the mink's back, big muscle in the minks and in humans, that's latissimus dorsi. Incidentally, latissimus means widest. Latissimus dorsi, widest back muscle. That's how it's named 